Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I have a very interesting lesson today. If a statement is too complicated uh, to be expressed in one clause, we need to put many clauses together to make one sentence. There are two ways in which we can do this. Let's take a look at the first way. We use one clause as a main clause and then add other clauses to convey subordinate meanings. Now, what do I mean by subordinate? Subordinate means secondary. Secondary meaning, so second in importance. Let's take a look at my first example. He assisted the lady because he felt she needed his help. So the main clause here is highlighted in red. He assisted the lady. So this is the main clause. And then we have because, that I will get to that in a minute. He felt she needed his help. This is a subordinate meaning, so this is secondary in importance. Let's take a look at a second example. They arrived at the station that was far away from downtown. So the main clause here is they arrived at the station. So if we take out the rest, this makes sense, right? They arrived at the station. Now the subordinate uh, meaning or the subordinate part of the sentence is was far away from downtown. This is extra in the sentence. Let's take a look at the second usage. We can link clauses together. So the example, Mary is a good student, so she deserves a good grade. So these are two clauses linked by a conjunction. I'm going to get to, to that in a minute. The second example. I arrived home and I got undressed to take a shower. To take or to have a shower in uh, British English. When we put two clauses together, we need to use conjunctions like so and that because. However, there are three kinds of conjunctions, subordinating, coordinating, and correlative. There is a lesson, not just one lesson, but three lessons on subordinating, coordinating, and correlative conjunctions. If you want to watch those lessons, you may click here. Now, um, a clause which begins with a subordinate conjunction after if, when, as, etc. is called a subordinate clause. And I'm going to give you two examples. Let me erase this first. Okay, so here we have the examples. When you see her, say hello for me. So the subordinate clause is when you see her then say hello for me. Another example. If I had the money, if I had the money, I don't have the money, but if I had the money, subordinate clause, I'd buy that house. These are also examples of conditionals, the first and the second. And if you want to watch a lesson on conditionals, you may click here. However, there are three kinds of subordinate clause. Relative clauses, reported clauses, and adverbial clauses. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about adverbial clauses, in this case, time clauses, because there are eight type of adverbial clauses. So we have manner clauses, we have conditional clauses, purpose, reason, result, concessive, and place. There are eight, so many. So the time clauses that we're going to talk about in this lesson are when, before, as, until, after, since, and while. 
when do we use them? They're used in order to establish when something happens by indicating a period of time or another event. It's better to look at the example to understand them. So, she decided to take up a course at university when she finished college. So, the adverbial clause in this case, the time clause, is when she finished college. So, I repeat, she decided to take up a course at university when she finished college. Look at the tenses right here. They're all both in past simple. They follow the same tense. Let's look at the second example. You cannot drink that milk after its expiry date. After its expiry date is the subordinate or the adverbial clause, time clause in this case. You cannot drink that milk after its expiry date. Remember, one thing to remember about our verbial clauses or time clauses. Pay attention when writing a story. You need to use the same tense, past or present, of the main clause, like I did right here. So, the uh, two examples, uh, I gave you more examples in this lesson because it's, it's quite complicated to understand uh, time clauses. He was buying food when I bumped into him. So you can see he was buying food, so this is past. It doesn't, doesn't matter if it's past continuous. And then the uh, time clause, when I bumped into him, is past simple. So they are both, however, past. Another example. She looks after their children while they work abroad. So the time clause, while they work abroad, is in the present. And the main clause is she looks after children, which is also present. When using conditionals, like here, obviously these are the exceptions. And for, I gave you another example. When they arrive from Madrid, I will show them around. What type of conditional is this? Yes, it's the first conditional. Now I'm going to erase this and I'm going to talk about other uses of time clauses. So we're back. I wanted to talk about other points using uh, time clauses. So the most common conjunction in time clauses is when. But if you don't want to use when, there are expressions that you can use, such as the last time, the next time, and long before. I have two examples for you. The next time I see her, I'll tell her I like her. So this is also what? Yes, it's the first conditional, okay? An example of a first conditional sentence. Let's take a look at the second uh, example. Long before he finishes his debate, they'll have left the meeting. So you can see long before, right here instead of when, in the time clause, and then we have the main clause. Now, we can use when, while, once, until, or till, followed by a prepositional phrase or adjective. So we have the example here. I was reading about the hijack while on the subway. While, you can see the conjunction, and then the prepositional phrase on the subway. If you want to watch a lesson on prepositional phrases, you can click here. The next example, he burst into tears, so he cried all of a sudden, once at the office. Once, the conjunction, and then the prepositional phrase at the office. Remember though, whenever, wherever, plus an adjective such as necessary or possible, just like my example. And this is a suggestion for you students. Whenever possible, try to practice your English with someone. It'll definitely help you get better at it. Well, that's it for today. If you want to make a comment, a request, 
or if you want to write your own example using the uh, time clauses, you may do so under this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I suggest you do. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to share the lesson if you liked it and see you next week with a new lesson, grammar lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.